morning, everyone. I'm Everton Fraga. I'm here to talk about MIST project. Uh, Alex van der Sende uh, couldn't be here. Uh, he's about to have baby, so maybe next time. <laughs> Well, we're here to talk about MIST project. Uh, first of all, let me go back here. Okay, why MIST? What's the vision of the project? It is to host the Web3, Web3 projects, uh, the land of the decentralized applications where uh, you could access websites that live actually in no central server using peer-to-peer -peer technology, which are quarm, and having the blockchain as the backend. Let's browse through the past versions. Okay. At the first DevCon, there were no mist. <laughs> so that's why people would execute transactions that uh, execute smart contract uh, methods only in command line tools. So it was really developer oriented and well, no graphic interface. So you had to be a command line guru. Therefore, no dApps. By the time of, the, of DevCon 1, we had Ethereum wallet, which was the foundation of, of the dApp space. It was the first one we built. It was more like an advanced tools for specialists. You had to click around and, and get to know all the, 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 all the application. And it posed as a dynamic interface for contracts through gen auto-generated, uh, based on the ABI of the contracts. You could have uh, executing contracts with all the parameters and is like a boolean and you int and then you would execute methods. Well, it was, uh, it did its job, uh, but for the general use, uh, there were some features missing, of course, such as that would require you to have ether, for instance. Then by the time of the DevCon 2, we had uh, released the Mist beta which was more like a Firefox or Netscape navigator as the beginning of the internet. <laughs> so uh, focus on, on the enthusiast user. It presented the full power of the web for smart, smart contracts. So you would, uh, from your JavaScript application, from your website, you would trigger transactions and then Mist would handle it. Here you can see a confirmation window about that, and the execution of a method in a contract. We, we have these uh, the parameters that could be parsed via an ABI directory built by Piper. So yes, that led to, to many other things. So you could create your own uh, Congress DAO uh, contract and then build an interface out of it. But you know, as the blockchains started to grow in size, it was becoming less and less practical for the users to have the whole sync, uh, the whole blockchain synced. So yeah, this is one thing that we will talk later. Throughout this time, we had uh, the the ecosystem has grown like you know like crazy. Through all these three years, uh, we, have, we have been uh, downloaded many, many times as well. So I'm uh, here proud to share with you that Ethereum Wallet and Mist combined had been downloaded more than 2.6 million times. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> So that shows a bit of uh, the size of the trouble we have, actually, <laughs> because we are the most uh, user forefront of Ethereum projects uh, 
And then we have to deal with all those sort of problems that, that came as well. Well, in order to solve that and organize all the, the project, we did a MIST summit in Rio, where we get uh, to have the whole team. And we talked about lots and lots of things. So it was sort of a whole week uh, thinking and working. So here's some proof of workshops for you. <laughs> Notice that all those different clothing, so it was really a, a whole week. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was our uh, team at that time. So yeah, we came up with really uh, lots and lots of experiments. Uh, you know, those are only some interface-wise experiments. So let's get to the delivered features this year. Uh, first and foremost, our main, main concern is uh, security. Because, well, we have a browser that handles private keys. So it gets, you know, it's not so simple as would be a simple website that doesn't handle anything related to money, for instance. Well, let's put a ribbon on this because it's so important. So uh, we've made an extensive audit by Q53, which is a really, really cool uh, German company. Uh, those guys are really skilled. And they managed to, found, to find 22 issues with varying severity levels. So it has some critical ones, high, medium, and low. All of those were fixed by us. As soon as they, they uh, reached us, we, we were ready to fix. And we increased our test suite, so uh, no regressions here. And also we had some really important Ethereum uh, bounty program submissions. And here I'd like to thank uh, Juno and New Ho Kim Really, you know, thank you. <laughs> and we had uh, also some other exciting features, such as the Swarm integration uh, in beta version. So a user now is, is allowed to click on file, upload to Swarm, then choose a file, upload it to this. Swarm instance that's running locally in his machine. Then the file is in the Swarm space. The Swarm will compute the hash out of it and communicate with other Swarm instances, copying the files over them. Well, that's actually the seed of the Web3, right? You could upload a website, then access like this, pasting the same hash in your browser. But, well, here's one thing. Swarm comes with ENS integration, so you could have this. That's one of my favorite features. <laughs> and speaking of ENS integration, we also did some of them in the wallet. So, well, of course, you're, uh, you're able to uh, transfer Ether to a certain address. EtherealFoundation.eth, for instance, or add a custom token. Just putting uh, the symbol of the token, then it will search on a previous, uh, previously made list and get all the details. Uh, then, after so after these three years, as I told you. Uh, the sync was sort of a problem for the users. We got many, many people saying, my balance is still zero. I'm, I'm seeking here for, you know, hours, and I can't still see my stuff. So we have now integrated Mist with the Light Client. Still in beta version, uh, but the there, we are aiming to reduce the syncing times by an order of magnitude, and is still using the version one of the protocol. The version two is about to, to come, 
uh, maybe right after the DevCon. So keep posted on Go Ethereum uh, team and Miss. We have also built-in Remix IDE. So we've seen uh, Hudson Jameson, we'll see Yen's talk uh, right after mine, actually. Uh, and now we have the, the possibility to, for a developer to write code, run on the mainnet or on the test nets, uh, and that's quite powerful. The developer is also able to debug transactions to see what, exactly what steps that transaction made and what were the, state, uh, the states of the variables. So we also did uh, a really easy way for the developer user, which is solo network. It will make use of the Go Ethereum uh, dev flag, so you can have your own private Go Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so this is not actually a simulation, it's the real deal. You run a, an empty blockchain from scratch in your machine, and you can manage mining from the interface. So that is uh, missed aiming to adopt, uh, for a larger adoption of developers. We also had, uh, by the end of the last year, a Windows installer, so people you know, got happier. And now some planning features. Account management is one of those really, really important ones, uh, which would leverage the power of a standalone transaction signer, enabling a remote node management, and easy to switch between nodes. Uh, here's the deal. If we want to use Infura, for instance, for any reason, uh, we would sign those transactions from within the signer, all of those uh, account keys would be held at, a, at the same directory, and we could even switch between nodes. Could be Go Ethereum, Pi Ethereum, or any other. Having all those uh, keys managed by Mist couldn't be uh, even harder wallets. So this account management would lead to having those multiple Ethereum clients. So you could use your own favorite node having native support to Ethereum clients. It's actually a JSON manifest, which we already did, so it, it only has uh, GAF for now. All those accounts will be managed by Mist, so if you switch nodes, you would see, st uh, still see all the same accounts. So we're under uh, actually a major factor being led by Mark, who is there, maybe? Yeah, Mark. Show yourself. He's not here. Hi. Where? Oh, here. Yes. <laughs> Mark is our new addition. He's a Redux book author, a really skilled developer. So he's fixing internal state issues for now, which is mainly the foundation for major features to come. We're also thinking about having a sync jumpstart, which is something really awesome in order to fix that zero balance issues. So you would start connected to a remote node, so you would see all your balances, all your, all your stuff like real time. Then you'd have a background sync. So that would progress, progress, progress. When it comes to the right point, you would switch over. So you would switch to light client or full node over choice. There's also this important uh, news for the DAP developers that we're planning to isolate local storage uh, between networks. So you would have uh, different scopes to work with. So the DAP developer wouldn't be uh, worried anymore about having mainnet uh, storage and testnet storage and, you know, also, transaction specter, which is something, you know, it's time for us to have. We would show pending and past. No more per dApp setup, because as uh, taking the wallet as an example, it handles all its transactions and past and history. So that wouldn't be necessary anymore. All with ABI lookup, so you'd see 
uh, once that uh, methods are on the direct research, that would be uh, so evident. And you'd see perfectly the transaction details. And speaking of the Ethereum wallet, it's time for a change. So back then, it, would, uh, it was one of the most ideal ways for you to kickstart on your Solidity project. But now we have some powerful tools like Remix. And maybe we don't need some features that we had in the past. So now we see it as the ideal way of uh, starting as a Solidity development is having, well, in, in Remix itself. So we're planning to deprecate some features in order to have more simplicity. And we're planning to have a new wallet, wallet contract. There are some other uh, audited and solid work around, so we're planning to, in the near future, to change that. Well, uh, this is about developers as well. Yeah. So we plan to have better integration with Remix, improving private net integrations, kickstart some Puppet magic, and of course, we're totally open to suggestions, so you can guys reach me out before, before uh, lunch or maybe something. Uh, speaking of the ecosystem we're trying to build here, I think it, it makes a lot of sense if we, if we could have some DAP trust meter, because there is a fundamental question about, about this. Should dApps have access to HTTP? If dApps could be run from Swarm, could be loaded from Swarm, would they, does that make sense, even sense, to have access to HTTP? We all know the web now is full of trackers from all kinds, and those trackers feed the multi-billion markets, uh, taking advantage out of, out of our online habits. And once dApps are hosted in Swarm, users will, will be able to decide whether or not a certain dApp would have HTTP access. And although the, web, the blockchain has already proven itself secure, of course, social engineering and trickery are important problems to deal with. And we'd like to invest some time into anti-phishing mechanisms and using some sort of reputation system or blacklist subscriptions that users will be able to easily manage. So yes, here at DEF CON 3, I present to you some, this summary. We've got hardened security, smarter GAF updates. We're no longer uh, having to release missed versions for each GAF update. ENS integration, Swarm beta, the like client, remix integration. So uh, there's a key takeaway, which is uh, Mist is a full browser uh, that makes you run a full node. Uh, you, it can be also a, a light node, but the thing is, you should, for the good of the ecosystem, run your own node. <laughs> uh, well, this is our current team. And we also have some many and dozens of contributors. So I'd like to uh, clap a little bit for them. <laughs> Those guys helped us with translation, with many bug fixes, and lots of suggestions around. Uh, and there's one more thing. Uh, remember that I told you about the workshop back in June. Uh, we worked together for that whole week and discussed about many, many things. And Victor Maya kickstarted a new track within the team. So I invite him to stage to talk about his, his new project. Victor. Oh my God, sorry about that. So hello everyone. Um, now we are gonna show you show you something new. So are you ready? Um, I think everyone here dreams about a centralized web, 
a world of abundance where there are no companies, where nobody owns anything. There are just public debts and DAOs that are um, easily forkable, resilient, and free. Can you imagine that world? Well, of course you can. A film is that thing. But for back end services. So, what about the front end? What about user interface? Well, it has been two years since our launch, and yet most dApps are still just centralized companies with tokens. They are hosted on central computer. They use centralized APIs. So where is the decentralized web? Why it's not happening? Um, let's talk about MIST. Um, whoops. This is our code. Um, as you know, it's not in a great state now, right now. Um, MIST is a little, a little bit slow. It has some bugs. Uh, of course, we're working to improve it, and we believe you can make it much, much better now with Mark on your team. But even if MIS itself was perfect, even if that thing was flawless, will that be enough? Well, what about those? Browsers like MIS depend on a huge web stack. There are millions of lines of code that we do not control. And you already had two major vulnerabilities because of those things. So the point is, how can we prove those things to be secure? Well, we can't. And that's a serious problem for a browser that deals with real money, don't you think? So, and even if that was not the case, if those things were perfect, what about those things above? Well, let's talk about JavaScript. Um, Okay, sorry, I think I have some problem with this controller. So, would you use that code on your DAP? No, really, think about it. Is it safe to use that thing on your DAP? Well, of course it is. It's just a pure function. It's as simple as it gets. There's nothing potentially safe about it. So, what about this one? Would you use that thing on your DAP? Well, of course you would, would not. I hope, you, I hope you will not. I mean, you don't know what Square.js does. It could do anything. For example, this is a valid implementation. It's correct. But there is something extra there. It also alters the global Web3 object. So this is, like, this is not cool. This is the kind of bullshit you can do in JavaScript. Um, so by the way, this is not only about private keys. Um, hacking the global scope of a DAP can cause it to, for example, uh, show misleading info, track user actions, mine cryptocurrencies on your computer. So here's a lesson. You should never import JS code you did not read. It's not safe. But, uh, oh my god. <laughs> I think, let me just try something. Okay, I'll just use the arrows. Uh, but we know that DAP devs read all their imports. Like, this is not a real problem because DAP devs are doing all that audit work by themselves, right? So let me show you something. Uh, this is a list of web3.js dependencies. Um, each one of those lines is an npm package with a lot of files, perhaps hundreds of lines of code. This is the first, this is the second, the third, All those are web 2.js dependents. And my question is, um, have you dep devs around here? Read all of them. Any of them could be hiding something like this anywhere. So the point I'm trying to make is, um, for that and many other reasons that I don't have the time to explain, the web as we know it was not made and it's not ready for crypto. So what he needs is not another web browser, but a brand new thing made from scratch for a centralized web. We need an answer to the question, how would the web look like if it came after Ethereum? And to answer that question, we started the Moon Project. Thank you so much. So this is not another web browser, but an actual decentralized app engine 
that is lightweight and performant. Uh, uses a scripting language with safe modularity, so people can share code without needing to audit everything. And that language is kind of like JavaScript, but without the bad things. And it's small enough to be formally proven secure. And if those words sound a little bit scary, um, that just means a computer, not a human, can verify that the whole thing does not have a single vulnerability. And that's kind of a big deal. So in short, oh my god. Sorry. So in short, this is what we have, and this is what we're building. Um, by the way, I'd love to um, elaborate on how those things are possible, but sadly, I don't have the time for that right now. So sorry, that will be for another day. And finally, uh, some of you may be thinking, but I like the web, the web has so many things, are you just like throwing the whole web away? Of course not, and not that insane. Um, everything's web compatible, and Moon apps also work inside a browser, and Moon Lang can be compiled to JavaScript. In fact, you could even use Moon Lang as just a safe module system for JavaScript. So for example, here I import Moon Lang in normal JavaScript code, then I use Moonlang to import some library from IPFS or Swarm. And then I use that library inside normal JavaScript. Um, so you don't actually need to use Moonlang to benefit from it. And it also works on other languages. So you can think of it as kind of like a safe coding sharing tool, not an actual language. You don't need to use it. So demo time. Um, this is a video of the Moon browser. It's the web version of the Moon engine. Uh, this is a 100 kilobyte HTML file. So yes, it's really small. You can use it kind of like my wallet, but with dApps. Um, so let's open a dApp by pasting its IPFS hash. As you can see, this dApp is pretty simple. There is a title, there is an image, and there's the black number. It's connected to Ethereum. So let's see how its codes look like. Um, one of the cool things about Moon is that you can always recover readable code from its bytecode. So it's not actually plain text as we do on the web. We recover readable code from the bytecode. Um, above there, we have imports with our just IPFS hashes. And that's good because with that we can make sure that those imports will never change. Um, there we have the main component with some things like its name, its local state, and a title. Um, there is a fetch function. Um, it gets data from Ethereum. Since Moon is a pure language, we need to use something called monads to do that. But you don't need to worry about that because that's pretty hidden. And finally, we have the handler function. It's kind of like React. So I guess some of you may be familiar with that already. So let's change some things. Um, here we replace Moon by DevCon on the body. We also do that on the title. And now I want you to pay attention to the hash bar, to the title above there. As you can see, not only the title, but the hash itself has changed. That means the new DAP is already published on IPFS, or in other words, we just hard forked that DAP. That's kind of cool, don't you think? Um, of course, it is a very simple DAP, so let's open something more useful. Um, this is a token wallet. Um, there's some, there's no ether on this account, so let's send some ether to it. And as you can see, the confirmation window is still a little bit ugly, but the transaction was signed and sent. So let's select the previous account and um, see the code. 
Oh. Okay. So one of the cool things about Moon is that um, it has a component-based architecture. So you can like get inside any component that is inside any app. So for example, here we access a subcomponent of the wallet app. And we can also go all the way down to the most basic functions. See how everything is hash addressed. So one of the cool things about Moon2 is that, um, for example, if an application uses that same function or an equivalent function, it will download the same thing. So there is a lot of sharing and very good usage of IPFS resource. So OK, let's go back to the wallet. Um, as you can see, our Rita has arrived, so that's kind of cool. Um, and for the last thing, let's open again the token table. Um, now there is a question. This is a component from the wallet step. How hard would it be to use that component inside the Hello DevCon app that we just made? Well, let's see. So we copy that hash. We go back to the Hello DevCon app. Um, we import it by using that hash. Oh, sorry. Um, I actually go back so because I want to show some things and I pressed the arrow on the wrong timing. So. Again, here I import the token table. Um, I replace the shield components by the token table that I just imported. I remove the moon image, so it's the same place as the moon image would be. And we click above there, it's forked. And as you can see, that component is now working inside the Hello DevCon app. And doing that kind of thing is always safe. So we can always take a component from some other dApp and put it in your dApp. And because Moon is pure and made to be secure, you can always do that without worrying at all. So in short, a dApp engine that can be formally proven secure. Um, a scripting language where sharing code is always safe. Um, a truly forkable web. That's the Moon project. Um, if you want to try it, we have a live demo at that URL. Thank you. Um, by the way, just a small little point I would like to make. Um, that whole thing is actually decentralized. So there is no central computer anywhere. Um, the back end of the dApps is Ethereum. Um, code is um, uh, downloaded from IPFS. So like you can just try it, do something I don't like, and there is not anything that me or anyone else in the world could do about it. Because Moon dApps are actually public, forkable, decentralized, resilient, and free, exactly like smart contracts are, and as I think that that should be. That's it. <laughs>